Welcome everyone to the final night of the Spiritual Warfare Masterclass. It is so great to be with you and to be here with you during this time of teaching, of training, of impartation. I'm so excited. of the spirit that God's going to increase over you, that God's going to bless you, that God's going to release his favor, his mercy, his power. And I believe that as I was getting ready for tonight, one of the things that I was encouraged by God to do is to pray for all of those who have been in this almost like a cycle of spiritual warfare. It seems as if you end one season and you go to the next and the spiritual warfare never seems to end. And in those times, you can develop frustration. You can develop just this grouchiness about you as a believer. So tonight we're going to be praying for those who have been in a frustrating season and have been held by fear, by anxiety, by doubt, by insecurity. All the winds of life have come to destroy you and to just be in a bring you into a place of just extreme frustration. But I believe that tonight, one of the things that we're going to be talking about is spiritual strategies to deal with demonic and spiritual warfare, especially demonic root systems. I am really believing God that there's going to be a manifestation of his presence that comes to you. Before we get started, I want to welcome all the members of Impact University, the School of the Spirit, our new school, and all the Five Full Certification Academy members. We're so gracious for your time and being with us. All the members, of course, of uh, Crusaders Church and all the people that follow Apostle Eckhart, welcome to another time of teaching, of training, and of impartation. We're so gracious for you joining us tonight as we believe God for a really uh, a great time for those who are in spiritual warfare. Now, remember that the, the one of the graphics that we're using during this time, or one of the, the, the sentences that we're using, rather, is warfare culture. And in this time, I want you to use that... Um, that hashtag as much as you can warfare culture and this is one of the things that we're going to be talking about tonight because it's something that is very significant for who we are as a people of god and especially in dealing with spiritual warfare so i'm excited for this i'm really believing god for a great manifestation for you well we're going to get started so father we just thank you for tonight we thank you that you would cause your grace and your supplication your spirit to be upon this broadcast let there be a manifestation of the spirit of the Lord that comes upon this broadcast and visits your people with victory and might in Jesus name. Amen. And amen. Well, I'm really excited to be with you. I'm going to be talking about developing a root system in your heart and knowing how to overcome any issues. Now, many of you are saying, well, what do you talk about when you're talking about a root system? What is it that you're saying? A root system will get you to bounce off of any pain, any trauma, any circumstance, any wind can come, but because you have a root system, you will fight back. You will be strong. You'll be able to move forward in such a way that it causes you to really excel beyond anything that you've ever gone. And I want to read a scripture tonight. Um, I didn't get a chance to pull it into this. It is out of the book of Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 and 17. It says, then the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to cultivate it and keep it. The Lord God commanded the man saying, from any tree of the garden, you may eat freely. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat from it, you will surely die. You know, for a long time, I have always focused on the scripture, of course, putting the negative on the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And as I was reading this several uh, years ago, the Lord highlighted verse 16 to me where it says, from any tree of the garden, you may eat freely. There is a whole garden of experiences that we can have, but the regulator makes it so that the knowledge of life, the knowledge of the king, the, not, the, 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 the tree of life is the regulator. That whenever we have come through all the other trees in the garden, we come back to that tree of life to regulate us and to give us balance. You know, you, the Bible didn't say that you couldn't eat from any other tree. It says that the only tree that you can't eat from is from the knowledge of good and evil. And why is this so important? Because one of the things that happens in spiritual warfare is that we begin to develop a, a legalistic perspective and mindset when it comes to how you should war, 
how you should engage the enemy. And we develop basically in the box thinking that it has to be tongues. It has to be this. It has to be that. But the Bible says that you can go and eat from any tree. That means that every tree in the garden, except from the one tree of the knowledge of good and evil, has spiritual experiences for you. It has dynamics. It has strategies. It has all of the other components that can help you to navigate through life. And one of the aspects about the, the, the being planted and being grounded and being rooted in Christ is that it sets you apart from anything. Psalms 1.3 says, he shall be like a tree planted or rooted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruits in seasons, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. And one of the aspects that I want to talk about tonight is ask you a very specific question at the beginning of this broadcast that this question may kind of like surface around your spirit over the next couple of minutes. Do you have a root system or do you have a belief system? A root system is grounded in Christ. A belief system is grounded in everybody else except Christ. That means, let me give you some examples. That means that a belief system, you'll go and read a book. You'll go and uh, listen to a preacher. You'll go to 10 people before you go to the Lord. That is part of a belief system. But a root system depends on God. A, de a belief system depends on someone else's prayers, word, and worship life. What do I mean by that? If you're going through a hard time, the first thing you do, now listen, I'm not against, let me preface this before I say this. I'm not against having a other person pray for you, but it should not be the first thing that we do when we're in a hard time that we turn to another person to pray and to do this. And the reason as to why I'm saying this is because, again, it's very easy, and especially in charismatic circles, to be highly, um, highly high on the scale of being codependent to another person's root system to the point that we lack a foundation to developing our own root system. And we start believing only when we are that our prayers, our word, our worship time is only effective when we do it with other people. Now, I'm all for the for the gathering of the saints. I'm all for gathering with other people. I'm, of course, I love the corporate gathering, but we have people who have bound themselves to legalistic expectations that God can only move, that God can only do something when you do it a certain way. When in fact, in the Bible, as we see it, he says that you can go anywhere in any tree of the garden now, what I find so powerful about these definitions, and uh, when we talk about the garden, and we want to take a look at the holistic perspective, in the Hebrew language, the scripture says um, that it was a word picture. And one of the word or definitions for the word Eden is the light, but the other one is where the judge lives. Now, why is this important? Because if you go to the knowledge of good and evil, and you start eating from that tree and you start getting all these principles, you start getting all this coaching, you start getting all these things that come from people and it doesn't come from God. That means that you've changed the judge. When you change the tree, you change the judge. Come on, somebody say that to yourself. When I change the tree, I change the judge. What does that mean? That now the judge of your life becomes the world. It becomes trends. It becomes all the other things that become important to the flesh. And that's what happens when you start having a belief system as your preference and not a root system in Christ. Because you make it that any time that I go to the knowledge of true and evil, I have to keep going back to what matters. Now, why is this important? The, the chain, when you change the tree of knowledge of good and evil, it's going to create warfare for you. See, 95%, probably more, of the spiritual warfare in your life is warfare that is brought upon you by your decisions, your choices, your circumstances. And the problem is that because you went to the wrong tree, you redefined sin. You made it that sin only becomes what's so what, what's immoral. No, we're not talking about just trees of uh, sins that are you know sexual and all this other lying and all these other things. Those, of course, are sins. But when you, I'm talking about a philosophical sin that you basically replace the Christ righteousness and you make it a self-righteousness. You know, a couple of months ago, I'm going to put it with this example. I found of a trend that was on Facebook and I think TikTok, the people were talking about uh, the soft life. 
they were talking about having the self life where basically the self life is when a man or a woman takes care of the opposite person. So if I'm a, a husband, the self life for the for the woman would be that I don't have to do anything. I can just chill back. I can just relax and I can do what I want to do. I can have a good time. I can just be who I want to be. I want to be taken care of. Now, I'm all for taking care of my wife and serving her to the best capacity that I can. But there are spiritual experiences that I cannot have for her. The same for my children. I can I can be there to support them. But it's just absolutely insane that people would want to have the self life. Somebody say this, the self life is the self life because it places an emphasis on yourself and it makes it to where other people have to revolve around you. And if they don't revolve around you, then it becomes a problem. The soft life is the self life. You're in self deception, you're in self seduction, you're in self thoughts, you're selfish. Your only thing is about this important is yourself. If you said that to yourself that you like the soft life, you are to repent to God because in the kingdom, you do not get to have the soft life. Can you imagine the Apostle Paul talking to Timothy as he's in prison saying, son, I really want you to be encouraged because you're just having the soft life and I'm having to I'm having to have all these trials and this problems so that you won't go through them. Excuse me. Uh, 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 uh. The Bible says that in this world, you will have tribulations. It doesn't diminish who God is. It just lets you know that you will have things that you have to go through. But when you have a root system, you can bounce back. You can come back from any pain, from any storm. The wind may come. It may doesn't matter what shape and what sounds it comes from. And some of you are going to get delivered tonight because you've been having a philosophy that I don't have a root system. You've been depending on people to do for you what only God can do for you. You've been going to people. You've been going to counselors. You've been going to therapists to only to only do what God can do for you. Let me talk about this briefly. I'm reminded of when I was talking to several pastor friends of mine when we were going through COVID and uh, we were going through that peak of the pandemic and there was so many people that were calling us and saying, I don't know what happened to this person. I don't know what happened to this uh, believer. He used to attend my church every day. He used to come and he served. He was faithful for years. And then the, uh, the pandemic came and it was like this person just completely went nuts. They just lost it. They lost their faith. They lost their, 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 their fire. They never had a fire. They had a codependency that as long as I can go to church on Sunday, as long as I can go to church on Wednesday, and as long as I can attend a form of a Bible study, I get refueled. But that's not good because that means that whenever the isolation came, you could not hold on to the truth that God gave you because your belief system was grounded in somebody else's root system. That means that when the when the preaching stopped, when the worship stopped, when you were not able to get somebody else to pray for you, you didn't have the courage, you didn't have the boldness, you didn't have the tools to go and fight and believe God for what he gave you. See, that's what the good warfare is. That's the, that's what the letter of Timothy says to um to from uh Paul to Timothy that son fight the good fight of warfare. Be able to embrace things. I'm so proud of what you're doing. You're fighting the good fight. See, when you join the school of the spirit, when you join Impact University, one of the things that we're always going to push you is that we're going to push you that, hey, we're here for you, but you need to be your own roots, your own root system. We're not depending on you. I can't do for you what God can do for you. You know, I have, I have uh, one of our He's really, I hate calling him a worker because he's such a good friend to me, George. And he's been with me for almost four or five years now. But when we first got George, man, this guy, he wouldn't read the Bible. He wouldn't pray. He wouldn't do none of that stuff. And as a result, like a year into being with us, I had to let him go. I said, look, man, your lack of devotion is starting to show up on your work. You're becoming lazy. You're just stagnant. And I just don't do that. You know, one of the things that is our mantra at Impact University for our workers internally is we hire you for what you do, but we fire you for who you are. If who you are does not stand with the truths of God concerning what your what your belief and what your root system says that it is and is reflecting the opposite in your works, I'm sorry, buddy, but you got to go. I've got a responsibility to maintain excellence, to maintain things that are according to the scriptures. And so I want to encourage you today, if you're the owner of something and if you're over a group of people, you can hire them for what they do. You can work with them for what they do, but you'll fire them for who they are. Take authority over the things that God gave you. I want to read a couple more scriptures because I believe that God is working inside of you, something that is being rooted inside of you. 
most people have shallow ground. It says in Matthew chapter 13, verse 20, it says the seed sown on gravel represents the person who godly hears the kingdom message. <clears throat> it says shortly after he hears that it troubles and persecutions comes because of the kingdom message he received. Then he quickly falls away for the truth didn't sink deeply into his heart. Verse 22, the seed sown among the weeds represents the person who receives the message, but all busy distractions, he divided his heart and his ambition for wealth and result in suffocation, the kingdom message, and prevented him from being spiritual fruit. A lack of supernatural experiences, that means that you don't have many dreams, you don't have visions, you don't have prophecies, because there is no active king, no active spiritual experiences inside of you to get you to manifest the fruit of the kingdom. See, to be fruitless is to be rootless. If you don't have fruit, you don't have a root. If you don't have fruit, you don't have a root. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to read this from a different translation. It says, the seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and only receives it with, and, and, and once receives it with joy. Verse 21, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. That's what happened in the pandemic. They didn't have a root, so they fell short. When trouble or persecution comes because of the world, they, because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed in verse 22 says, then falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth chokes the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who, who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. Notice that in order for you to produce fruit, You've got to have good soil in the scriptures. And we looked at Exodus chapter 13 when God is talking to Moses. It says, hey, Moses, remove your remove your the sandals from your feet because the ground that you're standing is holy ground. All root systems stand in holy ground. All root systems have the beginning that they have to have a holy visitation of holy ground. In Matthew chapter six, verse 33, it says, seek ye the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. But in order for you to be holy, in order for you to be righteous, you have to seek it. You have to go after it. All root systems begin at holy ground. And if you don't have a definition for what this root down, the soil that you planted will produce the fruit that's in your life. See, most of us, we have sin in our life. We have just a lack of study. We have no worship time. We have no time where we allow it. Like George, when I was talking about earlier, he didn't have worship time. He didn't have the time with the word. He didn't have anything that was proving that what he was saying was different. And so about a year later, you know, he came back and God restored him. And now he doesn't have much mercy for people who don't read their Bible. He gets on his own disciples. He's out there putting people through the things that happened to him. First, it happens to you and then it happens through you. First, it'll happen to you. Lord, why is this pain so much? Why am I? Why are you teaching me this way? Why is it that I'm experiencing so much in Tame's battle? That's because God is doing a work in you that is trying to develop and, perf and, 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 and cause something to awaken and arise. See, the God has to do a work in you equal to the calling on you. Come on. I'm, I love that. God has to do a work in you equal to to the calling on you. And so I really am believing God that you're going to really believe something is supernatural. is going to be great for you. I believe that what you're experiencing in our life, uh, that most of you are experiencing warfare, just a lot of frustration, anger, pain, because you've not allowed God to do the work in you equal to the calling on you. Come on, say that. God, you're doing a work in me equal to the calling on me. God is trying to reveal something inside of you that is going to re refresh you, that is going to restore you, that is going to re revitalize you. But in order for that, you have to be rooted. Who are you rooted in? What are you rooted in? Let's talk about it. Romans chapter 8, verse 3, down to verse uh, 5. And then we're going to read Romans 8, 14 through 16. Now, is it okay if we read some scriptures? We're talking about being rooted, so we might as well get in the word. It says, for God achieved what the law was unable to accomplish because the law was limited by the weakness of human nature. See, that's so important because when you realize that you are in the weakness of human nature, this is when legalism kicks in. 
legalism is trying to obey the principles without the life giving impulses of the Holy Spirit. It says in verse four. So now every righteous requirement of the law can be fulfilled through the anointed one living in his life in us. And we are free to live not according to our flesh, but by the dynamic power of the Holy Spirit. Now, most of us, when we pray, we say Jesus Christ. The word Christ is not his last name like Smith, Jones, or Luna, or Diaz, or you know Eckhart, or Ruffin. That's not Jesus' last name. The word Christ is the anointed one. So somebody, you have to type somebody on the chat that says, I'm rooted in Christ, the anointed one. When you make that teaching and you make that confession come alive in you, I'm in Christ, the anointed one. I'm rooted in Christ the anointed one. I'm rooted in Christ, who's the anointed one. All of the components of Christ, the anointed one, starts becoming a foundation. And when you have that foundation in your root system, there is no storm. There is no pain. There is no trouble. There is no heartache. There is nothing that can stand in, against you because you're rooted in Christ, the anointed one. And according to verse 3, the human nature, the weakness of human nature, the weaknesses of the law, they will be able, they won't be able to stand because they're God, they're, they're not God given principles, they're man built principles. It says in verse five, uh, those who are motivated by the flesh, again, Romans chapter eight, verse five, those who are motivated by the flesh and pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue spiritual realities. Now, this is so powerful because this is what we just talked about. The soft life is the self-life. That's what verse 5 of Romans chapter 8 says, that those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits themselves. But those who live by the impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to do spiritual realities. What spiritual realities are we talking about? I want to read briefly, um, and I did not plan on doing this, so I'm going to find it real quick. Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. You know, lately I have been doing a study on the seven spirits of God. And I really think that God is putting this inside of you today because the spirit of God wants to give you spiritual tools to overcome. Isaiah 11, 2 says, the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. <clears throat> the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Now, why is this important that we understand? Because in order for us to have the right fruit, we have to ride the right route. So what is the fruit? When we go, when we may need to make a decision in life, when we have something that has to come upon us that we're trying to figure out life and trying to understand, I don't make a, a logical decision. I make a spiritual decision. If I need a new house, the Bible says, okay, what does the Bible says about the house? I have to go find it. The Bible says that God knows the dwellings of your habitations. That means that he knows the exact address that you should live at and the right place that you should be. Many of you, you're in a season of transition and you're trying to figure out where to go, but you cannot define it and you cannot understand it if you are not going to God. That means that you have to eliminate human principles, human reasoning. You have to set it aside and you have to say, I got to go to God. I got to go get the word of knowledge for where my house is, the spirit of knowledge. I need the word of the Lord. God, show me my house. Show me where I live. And then you'll start having dreams. You'll start having all sorts of visitations and you'll start getting something. If you got to go to your boss and you have to make a case, a case on why do I need to have a better salary? Why do I need to have a job? You don't go look at your qualifications. You go and you go to God and it says, Lord, give me the spirit of understanding. Give me wisdom. This is what elevated Solomon. When Solomon dedicated his life to wisdom, it elevated him. See, most of you are living life not at your fullest because you are not using your spiritual tools. You're rooted in Christ, the anointed one. That means that you have access to all the spiritual tools. You have an arsenal of things that God needs, that, that God has for you, and you're just not using it because you're so um, bound by the things of the world. So when we're making a decision to have a root system, the taking a root system takes a lot of work, guys. This is not 
you know, is not something that comes overnight, but because we live in that selfish ambition that we have the self-life attitude. Oh, I want somebody to take care of me. I, I really just really need to be cuddled 24 seven. But remember, you don't get what's fair. You get what you fight for. You don't get what's fair. You get what you stand for. You get what you believe God for. You get what you ask God for. The Bible says, seek, ask, and knock, and it'll be given unto you. And you're the, having that soft life. Somebody, oh, I need to be taken care of. The devil is a liar. Stop being selfish. Get on your face and begin to pray. God, can you believe and imagine what would happen to you if you if you if you get to the place that if something comes and a trial comes and a tribulation comes and all of a sudden instead of going to ten people you begin to pray to God and all of a sudden you go like Rama sundele mahai lebre and you begin to exercise the spirit of uh, the, the gift of tongues and you begin to pray what cannot happen when you pray in tongues for three hours all of the spirit of wisdom and counsel the spirit of the lord and understanding it'll begin to drop on you and all of the sudden you've got the answer that you're looking for come on you have to praise god where you're at you're to pray in tongues exactly where you're at because god will begin to manifest such great things inside of you when you begin to do this and all of a the sudden there's something that's exploding inside of you there's something that's exciting inside of you see you're trying to fight the enemy with this with a formula not with spiritual tools you're trying to fight the enemy and contend simply by just being uh, you you go get a book and says i'm going through a trial i'm going through a circumstance i'm gonna go get a book that says the 10 principles on how to overcome a crisis i can give you really 10 principles in, in 10 seconds and just pray in tongues and you begin to pray and you keep going but see most of us we need to renounce the demon of laziness and the demon of selfishness and i know i'm not this may not be a nice teaching uh but it really is something that God convicted me about that we have to stand for, that we have to believe God for, that we have to press towards the mark. We have to press. Pressing is not simple. Pressing is not easy. If we want the fire on our altar to never go out, well, what do we need to put? Fire requires wood. We need to put more wood. Well, the wood's not going to get there. It's not going to chop itself. It's not going to grow itself. It's not going to get itself ready to be burned. you got to make the work work. But most of us want to live the self-life. See, I'm really after that self-life thinking because most of the Western world and the church is full of the war of the self-life. And I want to rebuke that self-life out of you. I want to believe, God, that you're going to go and through your daily bread, you're going to go and receive God daily understanding that you're going to receive God daily things. You know, I understand, guys, building a root system, is it, it takes a lot of effort. You know, I want to be honest. The last uh, year, I went to a process where I was like, Lord, how much more are you going to stretch out of me? How much more are you going to emphasize? I don't know how much more I can stretch. And the Lord said something to me that says, do you think that I care about your convenience? I am not working in your convenience. I'm working for your good. I'm working for your good. I'm working to do something in you that's good for you. And what's good for you is not necessarily what you want, but it's exactly what you need. And when God said that, my attitude changed. I said, Lord, I'm so sorry for being so selfish. I was not aware of the process that you took me. And I began to put work. I, I began to put uh, uh, the fear of God back inside of me. And I got lazy for a time because I was so many going through family things and I was going through business things. And it felt like like every wave of life was coming against me but eventually my root system kicked in and I said I gotta get this together I will not be here and I will not be living here and ever since then I just felt like there was a restraint of 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 of, of, of the enemy that got lifted off of me and I've been living from my root system see in many areas I was living from my belief system based on teachings that I heard, but those teachings carried principles that never became alive in me. See, things become powerful when they become personal. And the reason why it becomes powerful for you is because it has to become personal. It won't become powerful until it becomes personal. You can hear teachings, you can hear good preaching, you can hear good uh, worship, but it will not become powerful until it becomes personal. Personal. It has to become personal for you. It has to be in order for you to go through the tribulations, the trials, the pains, the sorrow. 
that means that God is shaping and forming inside of you. Come on, someone write objective and subjective. See, we have a subjective view. That means that I only see the world around me. But God has an objective view. That means that whenever I'm going through something, God's saying, hey, there is a little tur turbulence in what you're going to go through. But you'll be okay. Just get through it. You you'll be all right. You'll be all right. You, you, you're going to work through this. And I, I, I'm reminded a couple of years ago, well, more than a couple of years ago, I took, um, I went, I went, one of my friends gifted me for Christmas to go fly uh, a plane and I took a class. And before I could get on the, on the air school, I had to go through ground school. And I learned so much more in ground school because when I went to air school, I said, okay, if this happens up there, I, I know how to respond. And some of us, you want to go to air school, but you haven't read your manual. You haven't read your word. Why should God release his destiny, his purpose, his call upon your life when you haven't taken the, the time to read your manual? You haven't taken the time for your ground school. You haven't been able to survive the few things that you've got to understand. And I want to read a scripture that I believe is going to be so powerful when you read this. And I want to encourage you to read this with me. It's in Colossians chapter 2, verses 3 uh, through 11. It's a long scripture. I understand we're reading a lot tonight, but I really believe that when I read this tonight, there's something that's going to come and alive in you. Something is going to happen to you. Something significant is going to take place in your life. And I believe that when this happens, that you're going to begin to believe God for something greater in your life. You're going to say, Lord, where has this been in my life? Where is this going to, where has this taken place? And, and, and you've been held by fear most of your life. You've been held by other things. I'm actually going to put that scripture up here for just a second. Let me see if I can get it. Oh, it's going to be too, too long for me. Let, I'll just, I'll just read it. But it says, um, Verses uh, Colossians 2, verses 3 through 11. For our spiritual wealth is in him, like hidden treasures waiting to be discovered. Heaven's wisdom, ha heaven's wisdom, I'm sorry, and endless riches of revelation knowledge. I want you to know this so that no one will come and lead you into error through persuasive arguments and clever words. Even though I'm separated from you geographically, my spirit is present there with you. And I'm overjoyed to see how disciplined and deeply committed you are because you have such a solid faith in Christ, the anointed one. Come on, I feel the presence of God. I love that. I am how this, I, I, it says, and I'm overjoyed to see how disciplined and deeply committed you are because you have such a solid faith in Christ, the anointed one. In the same way you receive Jesus, our Lord, and a Messiah by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you continually infuse with strength, encouraged in every way, for you are established in the faith, in, in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotional to him. Be aware that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with the endless arguments of human logic for they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of this world's system, belief system, and not the anointed truth of the anointed one, the root system. For he is the complete fullness of deity living in human form. And our completeness is now found in him. We're completely filled with God's as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and authority in the universe. Through our union with him, we have experienced circumcision of the heart. All of the guilt and power of sin has been cut away and is now extinct, extinct because of what Christ did, the anointed one has accomplished for us. The anointed one accomplished something for you. The anointed one died so that you can live. If you want your future generations to live, you have to die to yourself. If you want the anointed one to be present in your life, there's something in you that has to die. 
there's something in you that has to say, I cannot do this anymore. Lord, let me die so that I can live. That has to be your cry all the days of your life. Lord, let I will die so they can live. I will die to my flesh. I will die to my desires. I will die to my pain and my, and my frustration so that you can live. I will die so that you can live. See, there are many, many of us who you hold the key. You hold the, uh, the, the one who will be the bloodline breaker, but you have to die to your emotions, your selfish desires. You have to die to yourself so that they can live, so that they can be free. You know, one of the things that I'm conscious about since my son and my daughter were born, uh, even more than I was conscious before of my decisions and my responses because they're watching me live life and you learn to live by watching life be lived. You learn to live life by watching life be lived. And so if they can see my sacrifice, if they can see my allegiance, if they can see my response that I'm rooted in Christ, the anointed one, they'll go and find Christ for themselves. If you want a spiritual warfare tool, the best thing that can you can do is go and find a root system. Go and believe God that there is a root system for you that you'll develop it and you'll have that completely changed dynamic of how you see the world's problems. You know, last year around this time, I was living in Chicago and my wife was pregnant and we were going through such a, a rough time when it comes to different aspects of our life. My, my 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 marriage was great, but everything surrounded us was full of chaos. My our, our business was just really struggling because we had some major issues with uh, things that happened last year because of uh, pe people getting more strict with certain rules and regulations. And so they put the hammer on us and we were just going through a hard time. And then after that, um, there were certain things that were going on with our family members. And I had to stand on Christ. I had to say, Lord. I don't want this to repeat itself. And I remember when my son was born, my wife was in taking her first shower after not being able to stand for several hours. And I'm looking at my son. He's in the little bassinet of the hospital that he's got. And I'm looking at him and I'm like, you will not go through what I went through. I The curse stops here. It wasn't an inner vow. It was a declaration. The curse stops here. When I made that confession, there was something that had to break. But as a repercussion, I had to rebuild so much more in order to maintain the new life that God wanted to give me. I had to put work in all the things that I needed, all the things that I was used to. I had to die to myself in order to make them come alive. I had to die to those things in order for them to live. God wants to do a work in you. God is trying to stretch you to the point of his capacity, not to the point of your capacity. He sees your capacity. He knows how far he can take you. But the curse stops here. The way to redeem the curse is for you to get a root system. You may have had it in the past. You may have had, see, for many of you, this is a 10 to 15 year explanation of pain, of trial, of circumstances, because you made vows to yourself that said, they, they, I won't treat you like what, how they treat me. But when you made that confession, you blocked God from doing something inside of your life because you made a self promise that said, I am responsible for this area of my life. And so the Lord lost lordship over your life. And now God is saying, I'm coming to redeem this area of your life. And the spirit of God, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of mind, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel, the fear of the Lord, they're coming to restore your life. They're coming to redeem you. They're coming to put his grace upon you. They're coming to emphasize something so great and so powerful inside of you. And I want to pray for you and believe God that even though the trials may come, the circumstances may arise, that there may be pain, there might be suffering, there might be things that make you feel uncomfortable. There might be feels that, oh, I don't know how to pray for this. I don't know how to survive this. But Christ, the anointed one, is coming to visit you. Christ, the anointed one, is coming to visit you today. God is coming to visit you, Christian Marie. God is coming to visit you, Denise Jackson. God is coming to visit you, 
Teresa Thomas. God is coming to visit you, uh, 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 Justin Edwards. God is coming to redeem something so powerful and so great inside of you that if you would be told about the work that God's going to do about in your life, you would not believe it. See, when you have a root system, and now I can feel that I can bounce back from anything. I was thinking about Sophia Ruffin. She ministered for us last night, and I have walked, been able to I'm so gracious for uh, my relationship as a sister that I have with her. She, I, I've been able to walk through many seasons of life in her life, and she's been there for some of mine. And one of the things that I admire about Sophia is that she calls herself uh, the comeback kid. And we know one thing that I love about Sophia is that she's not just the word. She's not a brand. She is the message. As Sophia lost her grandmother, then a few weeks later, she lost her mother. Then she lost a relationship and she went through so much pain and through so much trial. But all of a sudden, the root system kicked in and she bounced back and the enemy meant something for evil. And whatever meant the enemy meant for her to destroy her life, the root system kicked in and it saved her. And now she's excelling. She's progressing. She's moving forward. See, I have that in my life. I've gone through trials. I've gone through pain. I've gone through circumstances, but I'm knowledgeable that eventually my root system is going to kick in or the leader is going to kick in and I'm going to be okay. I will overcome this. I will be I will be on the other side of this. I, I, I so uh, love this even about the determination of my wife. When she makes a decision, she sees something come alive. And see, we made a, 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 a covenant with each other. At the beginning of our marriage, we said, hey, this is going to take work for us to build. It may take years, but one see, one of the things that I had to learn is that I had to redefine success. Many ministry leaders, they define success by platforms, the brands they wear, how they sound when they're on that platform. Success to me, having this meeting is just as important to me as having a time with my family. I am so much more conscious because you need family to heal. You need relationships to heal. You need time where you can uh, do something with Christ. And inside of you, there's something that God wants to awaken and God wants to redefine your definition of success so that you can have Christ, the anointed one, living inside of you. Christ, the anointed one, is coming alive inside of you. Christ, the one who is rooted, the, the firm, your foundation, the Bible says, what can the righteous do if the foundations are broken? See, if there is cracks in your foundations, God will begin to firm them. God will begin to shake them. And so now I believe, God, that in this time that there is a spirit of fear of the Lord, uh, the, the spirit of fear of the Lord, supplication and understanding, they're going to take time. And I want to encourage you, if you've been in the place of pain, if you've been in the plane of tile, if you've been in the in the in the in the in the season where it feels like everything is stretching inside of you, delight in the good warfare. God is building something inside of you. And I want to be honest. I'm so always transparent with what's happening in my life because that's I, I have to live the message. I can I, I have to, to say this. Since Monday, when the master class started, I have Fought, fought every devil to make it to each night of the of the of the live. If you would just see what have happened in my life the last seventy two hours, it was like, Lord, what is happening to me? What is taking place? I don't understand. And then I was meditating today on this teaching, and I said, Okay, warfare culture, we gotta live what we preach. And I said, I called my wife. I said, Honey. We need to adjust our attitude. We need to adjust how we're responding to the situation. I'm not going to respond by the flesh. The enemy wants to make you respond by the flesh. And this is what happened to Moses when he had his staff in the air. It was powerful. The rod and the staff were great. But any time that he fell into human nature, the staff would fall to the ground and it would turn into a snake. Human, the ground representing human nature, the snake represented the sin. When he would repent and he would get his life together, they would, the staff would come back up and great things would happen. See, we have to keep our rod and our staff high and lifted up that we are saying, no, this is not the case. I will not do this. I, you, you could not believe that the, it has been a battle. But you know what? I said, Lord, I'm going to adjust my attitude. This is what we're fighting for. I'm I, I, I'm part of the warfare culture. I, you know, one of the things as Christians, 
why we're always engaging in warfare is because we're always pushing against the grain. We have people today, they want to be a man, men want to be women, women want to be men, some men want to be dogs, and, and some women want to be wolverines, and they, you don't even know anymore. But as Christians, we know, no, there's only two of us, is men or women. And so you may disagree, but the way that God says in the Bible that he created you, that that's the way that it is, and it's unchangeable. This is the what we're dealing with in the culture. We're always pushing against the grain. And let me tell you something. If you're going to be a Christian, you might as well prepare because it's not that you'll never have uh, peace, but you'll always be fighting something. You always are going to be pushing against the grain. And in order for you to overcome all trials in life, you develop a stamina. Eventually, you have like a bodybuilder that eventually you your muscle kicks in, your memory muscle kicks in, and it's like, ah, it's just a little pain. I'll overcome this. If I can overcome this, I can bounce back. If I can overcome from what I went through, all the pain, all the trial, all the circumstances, I look at the last year of my life with such a different perspective than before because I look back and I say, if I can overcome that, I can adjust. I, I, I'm good. I'm not saying that there won't be something harder that comes in the future, but every different definition of life has to change something inside of you. See, David was a warrior. He was, a, he was a, a king and he was also a shepherd. And every season of his life demanded that something new happen inside of him. And some of us, you're refusing to become the next best version of yourself by trying to hold on to a season of the past. You have to overcome what happened in the past. And that's why Impact University is here, guys. We want to help you. We want to help you guide you. See, it takes guidance. It takes it takes you to be able to put the work in and the root system. It takes work to put the, the root system in. And that's why we're here because we want to equip you with all the tools and all the things that we have. And I know that we talked about briefly, and I want to make this announcement tonight again about Impact University and why it's so vital for, 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 for why you're here. We're not here just pitching you a school. We're not here to trying to get something out of you. We have here spiritual tools that can get you through all of this, honestly, pain and frustration. And this is why, because we created in a school of the, uh, of the spirit, because you have supporting lessons from school of deliverance. You have from school of prayer. You need spiritual tools to help you overcome. And really the greatest value to me in this school of the spirit is this live masterclasses that we're going to be hosting. We talked about yesterday that the first one is coming up December 1st and apostle talked about it on uh, Monday talking about uh, the praise is a weapon. So we're going to make the first class uh the prophetic worship accessing heaven's library that whenever you're going through pain you're going through trouble you go and get a song about it god's gonna get the the bible says that the lord and seven says 317 that the lord rejoices over you with singing did you know that anytime you're going through any pain or any hardship you can lord give me a song for this season and help me overcome this Help me see it the right way. And so this live tools, this live things that God is giving you, they're not just for now. It's something that is creating and shaping and forming something inside of you. It's, it's giving you an experience of life. And so this is why uh, we have this available because we're going to give you the textbooks of School of Prophetic, Deliverance, and other Dreams e-courses. Uh, and of course, we have the bonuses that we're always going to go through. This is so valuable. We always want to be able to bless people and do what we we, we can uh, to serve you the best that we can and really encourage you. Uh, but before I continue, I, I see that Apostle has arrived. So I'm going to have him come on. Apostle, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you great, actually. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Rodrigo, for your lesson tonight. Um, I love that statement that we're in Christ, the anointed one. I've been doing a lot of teaching on the anointing lately as we close out this year. Uh, I've been teaching on the anointing and, and the, the name Christ means the anointed one. So uh, the anointed one is in us. We live in the anointed one. Really to be a Christian or to be Christ-like is to live by the anointing, to live by the unction, to live by the spirit of God. And as we're talking about the school, um, what you're offering tonight, I'm going to give you a chance to go back into that. But remember, knowledge is so important. Uh, the scripture says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. And we want to give people 
on the knowledge of the word by teaching, preaching. This, this Impact University has been such a blessing to thousands of people worldwide. I want to thank all of those that came on this week and have become a part of this segment of Impact University. And um, take advantage of these bonuses. There's quite a bit of uh, information uh, that is given to you in addition to the schools that are coming up, the segments that are coming up, the School of the Spirit that is coming up very shortly. So thank you so much, Rodrigo, for uh, uh, doing such a great job of moderating this entire this entire Spiritual Warfare Masterclass. And uh, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Okay, great. So yeah, guys, some of the lessons that we're having here are um, that whenever you, when you join the School of the Spirit, you're going to get access to uh, access teachings from Apostle Eckhart, Sophia Ruffin, Apostle Yolanda Stith. And there's a couple other people in there. I think Taurus Solomon is in some of them uh, on School of Deliverance and School of Prayer, supporting contact also from School of uh, Prophecy, uh, access to one year of the live monthly masterclasses that we just talked about, uh, the brand new Deliverance ebook bundle. And number three, you'll get uh, not bonus number two, that's special to only night one, but you'll get Bonus number three, a head to toe prophetic curse, where it talks about understanding your spiritual anatomy to cover yourself against spiritual attacks. And I do want to, uh, make, of course, make you aware that that's a thirteen hundred dollar value. And tonight you'll be able to get it for a single payment of one seventy nine or two payments of ninety nine. And of course, you're aware that we uh, open our uh, monthly option yesterday for just twenty four dollars a month, which is really something significant uh, that we're doing is really small and you can really gain access because we're always going to be doing this lessons throughout the year and we're always going to invite you to join so when you sign up you automatically be enrolled to all of the live master classes that we'll do and you can go to join impact the letter u.com join impact the letter u.com and be able to sign up there is really significant it's something that i, I really encourage you uh, to to be a part of, and I really I, I'm I'm excited about what we're gonna do because we're developing impact in so much more. It's so it's so so much greater than just being here um, and 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 doing something uh, significant for now. But go to joinimpactu.com. Be a part of this. This is again when you join this, you know, can you imagine uh, twenty four dollars a month? That's like for some of us, it's a Starbucks run or a Dunkin' Donuts run or even just going out to a movie theater or just a, sin a significant seat is so cheap. There are so many things that you can buy for twenty four dollars and really a month is a small sacrifice it's not a lot but when you invest in these tools you're building a dynamic root system because we're going to keep going through the entire year through something that's going to really encourage you and, and build something inside of you and you need other people who um who 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 will make you aware of what you're going through they'll help you navigate it through life you need people people need people to recover you need jesus of course but you need people the bible says that he places the lonely in families and for a lot of times you know when we went we talked about uh the pandemic earlier when we first went started impact university it was at the beginning of the pandemic and we went through a year where we were able to form uh this special intimate place with those who were in the university or still part of the university and we're just so blessed to be stable to have so many students from that time because we created this community that we had bible studies we prayed for each other we actually have a board in one of the groups that you'll get access to which i, I forgot to mention this that whenever you sign up you'll get access to the uh, private member members group and there is a board there where you can post your prayers. You can uh, say, hey, I need to chat with you. Let's pray together. And you have access to people who are able to help you and help you navigate, go through life. So this is really, a really significant for you. Um, and again, it's just such a small uh, um, sacrifice for what you're doing. And remember, it takes investments to build a root system and it takes time. And when you build a root system, you're, you're, you have a great arsenal to go against. Uh, anything that God in life throws you at. And so that's really uh, what I have tonight, Apostles. Is there anything else you'd like to add or close us out of yeah, prayer? Yeah, I, I do want to say that when you join Impact University, you're becoming a part of a community. Of course, we have our Facebook uh, Impact page where a lot of the people communicate with each other. Uh, there are the uh, weekly teachings that are done by different speakers. Um, it's really an amazing, amazing community of, of like-minded people, apostolic, prophetic people, globally um and 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 they're learning they're growing 
we're always uh, adding new things, coming up with new material, uh, moving into new areas. We love the word of God. We love training. We love activating. We love imparting. That's really the grace that is upon my life to teach, train, activate. And so Impact University is just one of the tools that I, I use to really, really release uh, much of what God has given me. So, and then all the bonus packages you're getting as well. The monthly partnership uh, is a is a great deal. We we just try to make it available to everyone um, at at a price range where they can afford it. We don't want to be over board uh, overbearing. Uh, we don't want to try to uh, right. get too much, but we want to reach people. We do have a lot of valuable information. It takes a lot of work to put this school together. So it's really worth it. It's, it's really what we're giving is much more worth, much more than what people are paying for. Because there's a lot of work that goes into this, the lessons, the teachings, the books, the um, electronic books, a lot of work, a lot of great information. So thank you so much again for those who are joining tonight and those who became partners with us this week. I welcome you. Um, I love meeting Impact students when I go preach in different places. They come to me and say I'm a part of Impact University. That's always a great, great um, thing that happens when I go to different places around the country and meet people. So yeah, thanks awesome. again. And um, join today if you haven't joined. If you've been thinking about it, this is a good way to get in. Monthly partnerships, you get the bonuses. And again, go to joinimpactu.com, joinimpactu.com, joinimpactu.com. Thank you so much, Rodrigo. It's back thank to you. Thank you so much. All right, Apostle. Well, thank you guys for joining. I want to pray for some people. I know Apostle has to go, but I do want to minister to some uh, who are on the live because I, I promised last night that we were going to make some time for that. Uh, I really believe that as we were ministering tonight, there was a couple of names that highlighted to me and I saw your name before. Um, I'm going to go up here uh, just for a second. Let me get to the screen. I want to pray for, uh, I'm going to not try to uh, butcher the name. I'm so sorry. L Lainey, D L A N I E, um, Davy, I believe is your last name. Um, but I want to pray for you and I want to believe God that something supernatural is going to happen in your life. I saw when I, when I, when, um, I was teaching, I saw your name highlighted and I saw, I heard the Lord say that daughter know that I'm going to bring you into a season of rest. And I saw that there were many times in life or over the last, maybe even months where there were things of uncertainty and there were things that God, that you were not aware that were happening to you in terms of what God was doing inside of you. And I, I heard God say that in this season of rest, the Lord says, I'm going to prepare you. I'm going to shape you. I'm going to re even um, redeem some of the things that have happened. And even in terms of your emotions, I hear the Lord saying that when it comes to your emotions, I'm going to begin to do a work inside of you where I'm going to cause some emotions to be restored and to be even magnified. It's almost like God, I see turning the volume up in your emotions where there were many times that things diminished, but the Lord says, I'm redeeming these things for now. And the Lord says, I'm going to do a great work in your heart. And even though there might be pain and trial and circumstances that have happened, the Lord says, know that the days ahead are days of my goodness and of my mercy. And even though in this season, it may have seemed like it was impossible for certain things to come to pass. I even see that there are some prayers, some prophecies, some things that you've been believing God for that you actually just kind of like chuck them up to the shelf and you said they'll come to pass eventually. The Lord says, son, I mean, daughter, I'm causing you to go back to the shelf and get those book bags. And I'm going to have you go and you will be able to check off the prayers because I'm doing something significant inside of your life. And I'm going to do something great inside of you. And so, Father, I just thank you for her life. And I declare that no weapon formed against you will prosper. I take authority, God, over every spirit that has helped, that has held her captive, every spirit inside of her mind, her heart, that generationally, I break every barrier and every stronghold in the name of Jesus. We take authority over now and we release God's miracles, God's grace and mercy in it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, I really sense when I uh, started talking about the emotions that there was another person uh, that was talking about um, or ma making a prayer about emotions. If you would come on the comments and just kind of kindly let me know, that would be great. I didn't uh, see this, your name. I just sensed it, and I just want to see if it, if you're here, um, um, if you would come on on the on there as well. 
Oh, wait, I think there you are. Okay, I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. Uh, give me a second, guys. Here you go. La Laishon? Yeah, I'm I'm just going to pray for you. You know, I, one of the things when it happens when restoring emotions, guys, I'm just going to say this because I believe that I see that there is many of you who are coming about emotions is that when God restores your emotions, one of the things that happens is that you have to allow um, the, 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 the fullness of life to come to pass. You have to allow those emotions to come and you have to make a renunciation because your life has been being held by love by, by fear bonds and so I'm, i put it up on the screen and i'm briefly going to talk about this because i i didn't have enough time to talk about it and i'll put this in the group chat later but your life is either held together by love bonds or by fear bonds and some of you when you're when you have that uh time of emotions being in restraint your life is being together is being held together by fear and that bond of fear is causing you to separate from the love of god See, when you have the love of uh, and the embrace of God, it turns something great inside of you. It's like the emotions just becomes restored. And it's like having like this flush of emotions just coming, just coming to you. <laughs> Somebody said, I am too emotional. I am laughing. But I really sense that one of the things that happens is that when you don't have your emotions, you lose your ability to of reality. When you look at the scriptures in Matthew chapter five, and when Jesus met the woman of the well, she was basically in an emotional uh, state of death. But it said Jesus responded and said, "Those who worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth." The word "truth" in that scripture is the word "reality." When you are desensitized from your emotions, when you are just basically out of touch with your emotions, you're out of touch with reality because you can't basically relate to real things. You can't relate to pain. And some of you, you've gone through so much pain, so much heartache, so much trouble that all of that friction inside of your life, you basically said, I don't want to feel anymore. So I'm just going to live in excellence. And you need to make a cry where you're at today. Say, Lord, restore my emotions. Lord, restore my emotions. Redeem those emotions inside of me. I, I know that there are many of you who are asking me to talk about the love bonds and beer fear bonds. I'm going to put the graphic on Instagram, I mean, on Facebook, on the new Impact University page. So go there and, and, and just request to join and you'll get it there. Lord, restore my emotions. When you heal the emotions inside of you, when you heal the emotions inside of you, it's going to be like something is just you're going to be able to cry, scream, shout for the first time. Some of you, you can't receive joy because you've made a commitment that I don't want to feel. Some of you, you can't cry because you're guarding yourself against pain. And so we're going to redeem. We're going to believe God. So, Father, I just pray for every individual that's watching this tonight. If they've been in a place of frustration, of being in, in heartache and in, 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 in just a uh, pain of their soul, where they can't seem to overcome trauma. Lord, let their emotions be restored. Lord, let their emotions come alive again. Lord, we renounce every aspect of our life that we've said, I will not feel again. I will not have joy again. I will not cry again. I will not weep again. We come out of agreement with every aspect of our heart that's broken. We ask you now, Lord, that you'll heal us, that you'll restore it, and that you'll put it back together. Now, many of you, you're going to, Feel something coming over you now that's going to go over your head, your shoulders, your stomach. You're going to feel like the presence of God. Just relax where you're at. The presence of God is going to visit you and is going to re restore something inside of you. And many of you are going to feel like, Lord, I can cry again. I can weep again. I can dance again. And for some of you, it's going to be several hours from now. You're going to have a dream. You're going to have something that you're maybe driving. You're maybe going something. And all of a sudden, boom. Your conscience is at work and God is saying, okay, I got to redeem the time. It's like erasing a, a hard drive who's had maybe, you know, thousands of gigs of, of, of data log, log, logged into it. And all of a sudden it erases. It takes some time. And so, Father, I thank you now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I come against every time of a problem with pain. I heard this as I was going to say that um, some of you have a lot of promises that haven't been fulfilled. Promises from people, promises from friends, family members, and it puts you in pain. 
And God wants to heal and restore that. And so today, God is saying, I'm going to redeem and restore this in your life. So know that the best is yet to come inside of your life. So, Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, saints, I really believe that God's going to do a work inside of you. And remember, it takes work and effort to build a root system. So keep building your root system because you'll be able to bounce back from any spiritual warfare because you're rooted in Christ, the anointed one. And so be encouraged. Again, go and join the university. School of the Spirit is going to be significant. We have sessions like this inside of School of the uh, of um, the prophetic, like the ones we had the last three days, we do this all the time. So we want to be able, we want to encourage you to join, especially during the live master classes. Go to joinimpactu.com. You'll have access to the bonuses after this. Be encouraged. Know that the best is yet to come, and we'll see you guys next time. Being be 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 always watching out. We might invite you to something in the month of December. God bless you guys. We'll see you.